All right. Yeah, um, welcome to SSK Yarners. Hey, how are you today? <laughs> Good, how are you? <laughs> I am Karen, and I'm coming to you from North Carolina. And I'm Sharon, and I live in Northeast Georgia. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, welcome back if you are uh, a subscriber. If you're new, welcome. We hope you like the episode. We have uh, a finished object, right? You have a finished object. I have some favorite yeah. notions I want to share. I brought two today. I have two works in progress. I think you have um, a work in progress and a new cast on? Yeah, sort of. I don't know if you call it a cast on if it's crocheting, but I have a new crocheting project. <laughs> uh, what is that called when you... I don't know. I don't know what they... You change. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not big in the crochet community yet or anything like that, but um, I don't know if they call it a cast on or whatever. Yeah, usually, usually it's a chain, but yeah, chain. yeah. Yeah, I I have taken a break from crochet because of my uh, because of my my arm and my wrist were bothering me, so I had to yeah. put my garbage pail away for a while. It's like sitting right there too. <laughs> I'm looking well, at it. How am I going to be able to? Huh? Different motion. It's a different motion. Hurts my it hurts my wrist a lot, so I put it aside because I'm using that rope, you know. So even more so, but yeah. Yeah, so we have a lot to talk about today, but I don't think it's going to be a super long episode, right? Let's hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope not. Oh, my gosh. All right, so do you want to start with your finished object? I thought you were going to talk about your notion. Okay, I'll talk about my notions. Okay, so, um, and it's funny, you and I were talking about, you said your op light broke. Yes. Yeah, so. One of my, that is one of my favorite things in my sewing room, in my craft room. Light needs to be optimum when you're doing, I think, any kind of craft, but especially sewing. And where my sewing room is located is in the front of the house, which gets sun in the afternoon. So any type of sewing in the morning or evening, not a lot. You know? Yeah, so you have to have your ot light. And I have an ot light, too, and I love it. Um, yeah. But what I bought, uh, I guess it was over the holidays, because a lot of times Dave and I will watch movies and I'll knit. Yeah. Um, and he doesn't like the lights on, because, you know, if it's kind of a, uh, you know, a, not a spooky, because I don't like scary, but, you know, maybe a crime or something like that. Uh, he likes the lights out, you know. Uh, so I bought, I bought this. Oh, cool. I like that. Let me tell you, it's one of the best things I ever bought. And it was extremely cheap. I don't know, it was like $8 on Amazon. Now, Amazon's okay. got a million of them. Yeah. So, uh, what brand is this? This is a LED GIE or LED G, I don't know. It actually doesn't say what brand, but there's a million brands. But this one has a nice, uh, it's gone here. <laughs> but it has a nice Velcro, so you can actually keep them held together. So yeah, when I hold them together, it's a, like a, a very concentrated light. Otherwise, if you spread them apart, um, then it's more of a diffused light. <laughs> You know, I have I have thought about getting because I've seen they have little clip-on ones because you know I can't see without my glasses. They're always on my face, anyways. I've seen that, but I've never I've never purchased them, and then I didn't know if they would be bright enough. But that would be that would be nice because it's not adding weight yes. to what's already on your nose. You and know? if I look up to look at the TV, I'm not pointing the light at the TV. That's that's. True. Or looking at Dave. Hello. <laughs> he already thinks I'm crazy. <laughs> when I put these on, he just cracks up laughing. But you know, you can. Uh, there's there's different levels. You could do. I think there's three different levels. So uh, yeah. Oh, I didn't mean to so do. They get, so it doesn't have to be really bright. It could be a little bit bright. And yeah, then, like there's okay. one, there's two, and then there's the brightest. So yeah. there's three different levels. That's a, that's great, and it, it's easy to have something hanging around your neck. Yeah, and I, I can't remember what they're called, but uh, 
again, they were very inexpensive. Yeah. Um, and they are, it's one of the best things. Yeah, here we go. L E D G L E. So lead goal. Uh, well, now they're 13 dollars 14 dollars well, yeah. So one, let me ask you. Ten ninety nine. dollars Yeah. When you're wearing them, like when you drape it around your neck, can you also adjust like? Oh, yeah. Okay. So yeah. actually that might. That might come in handy even for sewing because, you know, sewing machines always have lights, but the light is never in front of the needle. It's always behind the needle. And so if you try to put a light behind you, it's then the light gets in your way. Or you your know, head you blocks to, the light. Yes. So I might have to get those even just to try for sewing. Because I if have, I could Again, the, I like the one. Well, you could always put Velcro on it yourself, you know. Yeah. Because again, if, if uh, a lot of times when I'm knitting, I like to concentrate the light in that one spot. So, and it's probably the same with sewing. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I have teased Dave and pointed him towards him, you know. But yeah, they're very flexible. And yeah. mine came with batteries too, so. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so that is one of my favorite notions. And then yeah, I had- that's a good one. It's a good one, right? And yeah. when you're talking about lights, I'm like, oh, I was going to tell you. I'm like, I'll wait until we start. The other one I bought at uh, a yarn shop back in, uh, I think it was early. No, it was in February. Kind of the start of all this crazy COVID stuff. But um, I bought them. Now, normally, I use for my tails, I use a bread tab. Is that what you would call that? You know, that's for the bread, uh, you know, on the end of a bread. So I wind my yarn over if my tail's too long. And I found these at a yarn shop, and they're shaped like a sheep. Those are cute. Aren't they cute? Maybe I'll get the black one. Maybe we could see that better. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, aren't they adorable? And yeah. I think they were $8 for six of them. Oh, that's not bad. So now I don't collect bread ties anymore. That's how I, I like do that. Them. And they're cute. They make me smile, you know? Yeah. So the bread tie, not that the bread tie doesn't make me smile, but yeah. And that is from, I have it pulled up here. It's from Crafty Flutter by Creations. Yeah, she has rabbits here, sheep. Yeah, $8. And I want to oh. say there's six of them. I'm not sure. Oh, you get four really, small ones. Yeah, those are really cute. Yeah, yeah. So that's another one of my favorite little notions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I love both. Yeah. Of them. I just wind the extra yarn around my fingers. <laughs> and then what? Just wrap it the other way and sort of tuck in the end and it just sort of dangles. Oh, really? <laughs> like tie a yeah. knot in it? Wait, how do you do um, that? Sometimes when I pull it out, because I want to stitch, you know, up, it'll end up with a knot down at the end, but it doesn't really have a knot in it. It's just, it ends up getting a knot. Oh, but okay. I think that's Every, a great, I, I like the little sheep. They would make yeah. me smile too. Cause I like cute. it. It's funny when I, when I haven't been in a yarn shop in so long, but uh, when I was in New Jersey visiting up there, um, I went to the local yarn shop that I always go to and they had them. And I just like, yeah, you know what? Eight dollars off, I'll buy them. <laughs> yeah, I think they're cute. Yeah, I thought hey, they you know what? They're great to have because sometimes the tail on a, on something that you're knitting, you'll leave it extra long because you know you're going to use it to stitch up, and then yes. sometimes it just gets in the way, and you have a tendency to start knitting with it if you don't do something with yes, it. Yes, especially at the beginning, and a lot of times <laughs> I don't have my scissors there. Right. I'm too darn lazy to go like to a different room to get my scissors. But yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have so many times knit with the tail. Drives me crazy. Yes, me too. And then I'm like, son of a gun, I got to yeah. go pull this off. <laughs> I just started. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so funny. Yeah, so, so those are two of my favorite things, the little light. And again, I'll, in the down in the drop menu, I will remember this time to put the show notes like I did last time. So anything we mention, I'll put down in the drop down menu. So that's good. Yeah, I'll have to check that out and see if maybe I should get a little bit, little few sheep for myself. 
That's right. I just think that's a cute idea because the more yarn you wind on it, the fatter the little sheep is. Going. Well, and that's fun. Yeah, right. Yes. Yeah, I agree. They're just they're adorable. They're absolutely adorable. So yeah. I know she has different ones. She doesn't have this. Yeah, she does. She still has these. They're so cute. Oh, these are seven dollars. That's for, not I mean, bad. Four of them. Mine has more than four. Well, maybe you got a better deal. Maybe they were on sale at the time. I was lucky. Or maybe they're getting from a different vendor. Who knows? You know, things know. change. But I do like the black ones, especially. I, well, yeah, they're so cute. They really are cute. So, all right. Yep. Okay, so show me right. the finished object. I'm so excited. Well, my finished object is what I'm wearing, and I'll try to stand up. It's not easy. No. No. But it's that anchor sweater. Oh, it's so pretty. You know, it turned out well. I like it. I, I like the color. I love the color, actually. I love the color. You know, I wore, it, I wore it on the 4th of July, and they're like, wow. People are like, you have a you're, different color on. You're in red. <laughs> <laughs> it, is sort of, it is called, I think the color was called cheery. And, um. It did, it did, it does look nice. I mean, you know, I like it. There's, there's, of course, some things that I learned through the project, um, you know, and learned about the yarn, probably. Um, it does seem to stretch a little bit more than I would want, but, um, you know, it's fine. Yeah. I can wear it, and it was an enjoyable knit. It was very very easy and it's uh you know it's that anchor sweater and it's by yeah, petite knits. Right. yeah petite knits and it was anchor a n k e r yep and it was actually it was really pretty quick it's called summer shirt anchor anchor summer shirt is what anchor they call summer it. Shirt. i'm gonna write it down so i can put it yeah. in the show notes and you know i think the pattern's easy enough. If you really wanted to do it in a DK wool, you could and just make it, you know, if you can wear long sleeve sweaters in the winter, you know, yes. out of DK. It be, yeah, it would be pretty in a long sleeve. Yeah. I, I do think that it's a flattering sweater because of the patterning up here, which is all your increases for the yoke take place in the sweater up here, but it draws the eye up here. It adds, for me, I'm not very big up here, so it adds a little bit of, you know, width and narrows the waist. Oh. Who That's what I think. Who not want narrowing of the waist? <laughs> I am all for that one. <laughs> right? Me too. But I think, I think that's how, you know, because I think it, it seems to broaden the uh, upper shoulder area. And it actually draws your eye upwards, too, because the pattern yeah. is up. And it's and away from yeah i really am i really am pleased with it i'm glad i you know purchased the pattern and i'm glad i had the yarn in my stash to make it with. <laughs> yeah. and that was the bell by drops right Going yes to the yes yeah so it's it's a construction mainly of cotton there's a little bit of linen and some viscose in it yeah i think uh yeah i think i wrote it down it's like 53 cotton 33 viscose and 14 linen so yeah and maybe if the linen content was a little higher it wouldn't stretch quite as much um but it, it's it's fine i, you I like these games you used um i think i had a full skein left and two partial skeins because I used, you know, one for each um, sleeve. I didn't weigh the two partial skeins, but I'm sure it would have made um, two full skeins at least left, and they are 50 gram skeins. And I believe I started with seven. I actually found the receipt from wow. that yarn. Wow, oh, okay. That I had purchased from um, Wool Warehouse uh, years ago, 2017 or whatever. I don't know. And I started with um, nine skeins, so I had wow. two left. Oh, so, wow. Because yeah. I, when I looked it up earlier, they, uh, Garn Studio uh, has it on sale for $1.90 a skein. Yeah. It's crazy. It's really, you yeah. know. It's, and today, it's, so let's see, today is July 9th, 2020. So um, if you're watching it and you're interested in the bell, I mean, $1.90 for a 50-gram skein, that's yeah. 
<laughs> and you know, it really, it's not, it's not stiff or scratchy cotton. It's very, it's, well, the linen, it helps with the drape and a viscose, I'm sure it helps with yeah. the drape, yeah. you know, so it's a really nice, I like it. It's, you know, it's a nice um, yarn. So yeah, so I would say I use at least seven, 750 gram. Okay, wow. I can't believe that. So it's, yeah. Technically, so if it, it could be a twenty dollar top or, with or less, right? With shipping, right? Yeah. Right? Right? Sorry, everybody. Yeah. When I move, the green screen pops in. <laughs> I don't know why I'm using the green screen, but my house wasn't exactly. Well, you know what it is? It's my lights. When I do this, all my you could see all my lights, and it's very distracting. So yeah, uh, so, yeah so that's why I put the background. It's not necessarily that my house is a mess. House really oh, isn't. I, yeah, I'm sure yours isn't. I don't think your house ever was a mess. It's not yeah, like yeah. mine. <laughs> yeah, no, my house is. Uh, well, it depends on what room you go in. <laughs> don't open closets. You know that. Don't open closets in my house. Well, unless it's your yarn closet, because then there's a lot of yarn in there. <laughs> my uh, my yarn is no longer in a closet. Are you it keeping lives, it on the shelf? It lives on a shelf in my hallway, actually. Have a little it's sort of nice. Yeah, it is nice actually. Well, not all my yarn is on the shelf, <laughs> but most of my yarn is on the shelf, and it is not. It is actually really nice because every time I walk by, I kind of want to cast something on. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Really and I think in a sense, it's almost good to see it because then you know what you have too. Yes, yeah. You know, because I think sometimes you could buy you could buy yarn and tuck it away, and then it's like you forget you have it you know? Yeah. So, and then you don't find a pattern to use with it. Yeah. 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 And it's nice. I put it all in these like, um, recyclable plastic bags so I could see it. And that way, like if I have five or six skeins, it's all together. Yes. A lot of times I'm like, I could have sworn I bought more than three and then I'll find four over in the other corner for some reason, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I know it's, it's, it's good to keep it together. It is because otherwise you don't know how many skeins you have. And you know, you don't want to neglect doing a project that you could make because you're missing a skein somewhere, you know? That's true. Now I talked about my background. Let's talk about your background. That oh, my, build is gorgeous. My background is a work in progress. It's still not finished. Um, the, the little squares that I had were, um, I think five inch squares that some, you know, my friend Nikki had given me years ago when we met her up at the yarn shop one year. One year. She gave me back. And, and I thought, well, I should really try to do something with it. And so I had seen uh, a tutorial on making like this other bag that I made, this little tote thing. And I thought, well, maybe I'll make one for you and me. And then I started making these little, <laughs> these little, these little squares here. And no I really tote bag them, so I thought, no bag, no, no tote bag, no nothing. I turned it into a quilt. I put the squares on point. So I added Beautiful. a white border and then that uh, sort of turquoise border. But I have a fuzzy, fluffy uh, fi uh, fabric that I'm going to use for the back. I'm not going to, I'm not going to put quilt batting in quilted or anything like that. I'm just going to put this fuzzy backing in there. And probably tack it. I don't know if I'll machine do that or you know hand tack and it. You know. Yeah, it's so, so beautiful. It really, is. I really like it. So it's not a, it's not a blanket pattern. It was just a what a just a pattern for making just a, a quilt. Yeah, it's just it would be your basic like nine patch. Oh, okay. You know, I have no idea what that means because I'm not a quilter, but well, this pat you know like that square, the square right here. Okay. It's got nine. Oh, it's patches. nine. Got it. And then the yeah. white ones are just one big square. One solid. Oh, yeah. Wow. So that makes it easy. Yeah. It's <laughs> so. It really is so beautiful. I like it. I like that. I like the colors. I like how it forms a secondary pattern. You know, because yeah. you almost don't see the blocks. You just sort of see like the bigger squares. I I had no idea actually that the little until you just pointed it out that that's an actual square of itself. I really didn't. I thought 
Yeah, because so they're white. little tiny squares sewn together, which they technically are, but I didn't realize it was blocks, right? Yeah. Until you yeah. just said that. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you know, it's, it's just, uh, you know, you make blocks and you do rows and then you stitch the rows together. It's just, but I really enjoy, I enjoy it because it's summery. Yeah. So, and it's so bright. You know, even though I have this fabric for the back, sometimes I'm thinking, well, you know, it would be really nice to throw it on a table. So uh, maybe I should rethink it and just put flannel on the back because then I could use it as a blanket or throw it on the table. I don't know. True. Yeah, that's true. Or just put a white sheet on the back and tack that in. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that would be that too. Yeah. yeah, it's so beautiful. It is. No matter what you do with it, it doesn't matter. It's just beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I do like it. I'm, I, I'm like, I like it. I'm glad I, I'm glad I had those squares from my friend Nikki that I haven't seen or talked to in a long time. But she yeah. don't. She just so nicely gave me these little square, fabric squares, and I finally turned them into something. <laughs> yeah. See that? Doesn't matter how long you've had it, but it, it's, uh, it's beautiful. It really is. Yeah. So thank pretty. you. Yep. Yeah, love thank it. Love you. it. It's a lot better yeah. than my background. Well, this background's pretty, but. See, it's really not like that. <laughs> I, you know, it's not something I've ever wanted to do is quilt. So it's nice to, it's nice to see the quilting. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. I have a lot of quilt tops, but no backs. And so uh, I have finished a couple little ones that I had uh, for years. Some fall ones. I have a Halloween one that I'm going to give away. And, um, you know, and I have some big ones for beds, but I think that's what I'm going to end up doing is I'm not going, it's, it is very expensive to get them quilted, to send them out and have them quilted. My dream was always to have a long arm, but I'm not going to have that because those are also very expensive machines. Yeah. And um, yeah, sure. so what I am going to do is I'm just going to get some nice, either flannel or fleecy type, you know, cozy fabric and just tack them in and put the binding on and use them. Because they're yeah. just sitting, they're yeah. hanging in my closet. You would be Not, shocked to see yeah. how many and, and I have. Boys would love to have them. I'm sure they would. Well, I don't know. We have beachy ones. We have winter ones. I'll put a different one up next time, and you'll see. You'll just oh, see I got I can't different. wait. I really enjoyed you putting them up. I really like them. <laughs> yeah, I do. It's so nice. Yeah, and there's so much work. I can appreciate how much work's in it. There is a lot of work in them, but I there's just something about you know cutting things apart and putting them back together and seeing a pattern arise. Now I know some people do beautiful like um, artist quilts, but I just not doing that. I do I do like more of a traditional type quilt, you know you know. But uh, I me, mean, the one behind you isn't. I don't know. Very, I don't know what you mean by traditional, but to me that is so like modern and fresh and. But it's it's a traditional pattern. It's not okay. the artist, you know, the artist people really do some fun and funky things and you know, make scenes and use oh, got it. Like chain to thing. embellish and okay. different things like that. You know, they're more like um like pictures, like pieces oh, of art. Okay. Yeah. They're beautiful too. It's just not what I've done. But I but I do enjoy sewing. Yeah, <laughs> so. that's okay. That's all that matters, right? All that matters. <laughs> So, okay. so what have you been working on? Do you have any projects? Uh, yeah, I don't have a lot, though. I don't have a lot. I'm still working on my slope. My slope uh, top, uh, it's a shibui pattern. And I did look it up. It is still available. You could still buy the pattern. I think the pattern's $10. And I think if you buy the yarn, you get the pattern for free. I think that's how shibui usually does it. Um, and I am using the Shibui twig yarn, which again, I looked it up and it is still available. So, um, and I do love the yarn, I absolutely love it. But I haven't gotten that much further um, on it just because I haven't been focused on it. Uh, so, yeah, I have, I have some done. How are you? My green screen is just not, yeah. Cooperating. Yeah, well, it's not cooperating. But are you? You're, it looks like you're up to the arm. I am. I could divide now. I could definitely divide. Yes. Uh, and uh, one of the reasons I haven't continued is I was, the back is long. I don't really like the back long. Um, 
Yeah, I yeah. So I was kind of torn. Do I do I rip it all out and start again? But I've decided I'm just going to continue and hope for the best. Um, yeah. So we'll see. I don't know. But uh, one tip, actually something you really actually have to do is when you're working with linen, it's important to keep the yarn you're working from uh, in a plastic bag. Otherwise, it could become a mess. But yeah. So uh, that's it. That's that. Uh, yeah. So I'm making well, you should, some progress. You should finish it because you don't know exactly how it's really going to look on you until you get it finished and put it on. And then if you decided you didn't like it, then ugh, then you just take it out. And, but, and the majority of it's done. I mean, I'm right here, right? Yeah. So all I really have to do is finish this part. Yeah. You don't have much to finish. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have a whole lot to finish. So I'll go ahead and finish that. And hopefully that'll be a finished object by next time. So we'll see. We'll see. Sometimes it's hard, I think, to push along when you think something isn't going to be the way you were hoping it to come out, you know? I think Yeah, it's, it's, and again, I saw it on a woman wearing it. It's just beautiful. So again, maybe maybe I'll fall in love with it again. I'll fall in love with it again once I finish it. So right. hopefully that'll be the case. Uh, right. And if not, I'll just rip it out. Use the right. yarn something else because I am in love with the yarn. I absolutely love well, the yarn. And even even still, I mean, even that yarn, you could still redo that pattern. You know what you don't like about the pattern, so you actually could change it if you wanted to, and and just re knit it. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and and I probably so, would do that. Yeah, I probably would. It looks like it's a relatively quick knit. I mean, it doesn't because it's no sleeves, right? So yes, uh, yeah, yeah. I I wouldn't say relatively quick because the the yarn is so small. It's like fingering weight. Oh, okay, all right. So uh, yeah. Um, so I think that's uh, yeah, and it's done on a fairly small needle. I want to say a four point three point two five. That's why it's pretty small needle. Oh. It's better than a 2.25. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I think the only thing I've ever knitted on that is a pair of socks. So, yeah. <laughs> oh my so it's God. just a little bit bigger than a sock needle. That's right. It's one, one base, technically like one full size up, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess I didn't realize that the yarn was that fine. Yeah. I get, yeah. I think if the majority of people and the majority of Shibuya patterns pairs two yarns together. So I know there's a, a new pattern now, I think it's by Hohi Locatelli, where you hold the Shibuya and a, a twig and another of their yarns together. Um, I think it's Reed. Um, yeah, so you're technically not using such a small yarn, but it makes a really nice fabric. So yeah, we'll see. I'm sure it's beautiful. Yeah. Up close and personal and when you touch it I'm sure it's just got a nice feel to it it really does I, and I can't wait to wash it like yeah I can't wait to wash it and smooth it out because linen just crisps up really nice so and it has a little bit of silk in it which is also really nice, nice. straight yeah. yeah yeah but my new project that I'm working on is the homebody boy it's just not working out today is it really not <laughs> Sorry, everybody. I really am sorry, but so the whole the whole body. It's a it's actually a new design by Heidi Kiermeyer. Kiermeyer. I'm not real good with names either. Maybe Kiermeyer. K i r r m a i e r. Again, I'll put it down in the description. Um, she she's a major designer. That T-shirt I always make the V-neck t-shirt I always make. She did that one. Um, she's very much, uh, she's expanded her sizes a lot. So she's very, very size inclusive now. Um, but it's just a simple, just a simple sweater. Literally, it's so simple. Here I am. No, I'm back. Gone. And now I'm really sorry. I really am. I could just turn it off, but then you'll just see the green screen. Uh, yeah, so I'm looking, I'm actually looking forward to, to making this. I am using Barocco Remix, which is still available. I actually really like this, but I haven't gotten very far. It's top down. And I like it a lot because you're knitting back and forth and you're increasing the back as you go. 
Oh. I literally, not that long ago, put it in the round. So I'm just working the front. So that's all I have of the front. And then look how much I have in the back. Oh, okay. So no creeping up the back. That's a good yeah. thing. And then you go back and you put the ribbing in, which I, I yeah. like because I could put anything in I want. Right. So maybe I won't go with the standard. I think she does a two by two. Uh, you know, we'll see. I don't know. But yeah, so I'm really liking it so far, especially yeah. that she's doing the back like that. So I'm curious to see how it turns out. Because I guess you would call it short rows. Not really, though. Because you're just increasing your stitches as you go. That's interesting. So I don't think it's really short rows. Yeah. Yeah. No. You, do, you know, you do the back. You do. Um, yeah. I mean, look. Right. Yes. I like that. I do too. I like the idea of having more fabric in the back than in the front because things have have a tendency to come forward without doing specific short rows. Right. Right. So yeah. So I'm uh, I'm really looking forward to it. So. Uh, worsted weight yarn. Um, worsted weight, okay. Look at me with the blues. <laughs> I got a lot of blues going on. My last top was blue. So, yeah, so I really enjoy it. It's a paid for pattern. Um, yeah, but it's called Home Buddy. I really like it. I really yeah, do. Yeah, that's. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a very, uh, it's not real detailed. Like, there's not a whole lot of detail or anything. Yeah. No detail but at all. It's just a basic, a basic, uh, you know, pullover. Like I, I like that. I thought it'd be cute with a button-down shirt underneath it in the winter, yes. um, or even a turtleneck, or no, nothing at all. Maybe just a little camisole for a little extra, you know, warmth. Because I'm, I am right. using cotton yarn, but it goes all. It's it. It goes from extra extra small all the way up to six X. So which is which is nice, you know. Yeah. So yeah, I love that. I, yeah, I think that's a neat idea. Well, I can't wait till you finish it so you can yeah. tell me how it fits. Yeah, so we'll see. If you like, you know what? I didn't swatch. <laughs> uh, and I'll tell you why I didn't swatch. I've used this yarn uh, before. I have used this yarn four or five different times, and I knew exactly what my gauge was. So it was spot on with the pattern. So, and I. Oh, and that's I, good. I, I checked my gauge now because they recommend she recommended checking the gauge in the round. If there's one thing I hate, it's doing a gauge in the round because you have to use so much yarn. And I just think, oh, using all that yarn when I could just start the garment. Um, so I basically knew what my gauge was. And I did check my gauge the other day and I'm, and I'm spot on, which thank yeah. God. Oh my God. <laughs> well, that is good. And that, I mean, you know, for as far as you've gone, you don't want to rip it out, but if you had to, because the gauge was way off, you could. Yeah. Or you could adjust the size of the pattern that you're going to be making. Yes, yeah. that and that's basically what I was, that was my, going to be my decision, because she has several size mediums, because um, I'm making the large, but she has a medium one, a medium two, and a large, and they're grouped together. Um, so the majority of the stitch counts are the same. So I thought, you know what, and, it, and I still may change it. I may make uh, the body, the medium, and maybe the, the bust size, the large. You know, we'll see. Yeah. So that's it be enough that's nice point. because you can adjust the pattern more easily to fit, you know, because every woman is shaped so differently. I mean, you know, sometimes you need more room in the bust. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you need it in the waist, and sometimes you don't. So, I mean, you know, yeah. it's nice to be able to switch it up a little bit so you can make it so it suits you better yeah and she offers an addendum too uh if yeah. you want more room in the bust uh she does oh wow yeah she offers an addendum for that which that's the first time i've ever seen that yeah that's great. Uh, so I thought that was that was good too so if you do yeah, need yeah. more room in the chest uh it's definitely uh it's available so yeah. yeah yeah that's great that looks like a nice pattern to to make yeah yeah easy yeah. Uh, tv good. watching pattern yeah yeah, Raglan well, those, those are the best kind to have because sometimes you just can't focus too much on it. Yeah, I know. So what are you I, working on? Well, you know, I did uh, I did work on my socks a little bit, my ingle okay. side socks yeah. by um, Fortune Lily, Amanda. 
I, sh I can show you my progress. I actually got the heel in, so that's okay. good. That is good. So, you know, I do them all, two at a time and I do them toe up. And after I get the heel in, I just want to be done. <laughs> that's how I am with all of my socks. Like they look really, they are very narrow looking. Oh, they stretch. oh, wow. I love those. I love the pattern. I really do love the pattern. So it has oh, such really a pretty, like those. a pretty cable going up the front. I put, um, I put this color heel in it. <laughs> is that red or is it more like a raspberry? It is more, I would say it's more of a, it's going towards the burgundy. So it's a, deep, oh, okay. a, a deeper red. And then the back, you can just start to see it has a little pattern that's going to go up the back. Oh, nice. So, yeah, there's a lot of pattern to the socks, to these socks. Um, it's been really fun to do to this point, And now I just want to be done. <laughs> so what is the name of that pattern? Ingle, Ingleside. Ingleside. Um, I, you know, yeah. Ingleside socks. Her name is actually Amanda Purser of Birch and Lily. That's right. She's a young girl, very sweet. She sings very sweet. She yeah, has a black like hat. Can you show? Can you show the socks again? I want to see the front again. So it has. It's really nice. I mean, you know, and. Uh, the yarn is leading men fiber arts. So her pattern is written, you know, cuff down. I, I switched it and did it toe up because, you know, I just do, you I do just toe do up. toe up. Yep. You know, I just, to me, it just is easier. Yeah. I like do. that. So, so the cable goes along the foot on the front, all the way up the leg. And then the back just has a little detail on the back. Oh, I love just that. On the back. And somewhere, yeah, somewhere I read, um, you know, like if you're doing cables or thing detail on the back, that you shouldn't start right at the heel, like after you get the heel in, that you should give it a little bit of space because your shoes rub up in that area. And so the detail might, I don't know, stick out more, maybe cause the yarn to wear. I don't know. So I just, I started it just a little bit up. <laughs> just a little bit up about a half inch to an inch in between so it comes up over my shoe shoe and it looks like maybe 10 or 12 rows so i oh, I, I never thought about that what a great idea so the yeah. pattern doesn't have you starting at that point you just decided to start it later yeah i just decided to start yeah, there yeah that's really <laughs> smart i like that tip yeah well i don't know if it you know i just think that if it's in your shoe, you're not going to see it anyways. Yeah. So why waste the, the time doing it? And God forbid your shoe does rub, you know? Yeah. Well, I don't see the back of my leg anyway. So <laughs> the hell with everybody else. <laughs> I like it though. I really like that yarn. I really, I do like the yarn too. I like, I like the, the color. color. The colors Winter Wonderland. And I really Wonderland. like that. And I think Isn't I checked, that? I think they still have that. I think they do too. I think it's in their shop. It's available. Yeah, I think it's just one of those color ways that they keep all the time. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it's a it's got a lot of blues, it's sort of gray. And I thought, what color should I do the heel? Should I do it like a snowman and do orange? Oh, that would have <laughs> been cute. Yeah, but I went with red like a scarf. You know? Yeah, I like that too. Yeah, very cute. Well, like you said, nobody's really gonna see it except for you. I, I like a high contrast. Yeah, I do too. If you're gonna, if you're gonna put the time into, you know, having to weave in those extra ends, True. you might as well make them show. You True. Know? Now, how long do you do your toe? Do you do it two inches? I do my toe about two inches. And so, before I started the pattern, I did just a round of uh, garter. You know, I did a round of pearls, and then okay. started it. And yeah, I've done this before. 
with other socks and you don't feel that little ridge because once you're stepping on it, it flattens out anyways. But it makes a distinction between the toe and the pattern start. Okay. So it's not necessary. It's just something I did. And I'm, and I'm sure it's not in her pattern, I don't think, because she starts at cuff and goes down. I didn't read through the pattern to find out. I kind of, sometimes I like to do two rows just on the top of the pearl just to kind of give it a little bit of a definition between the toe and the, and the foot, you know, just to, I don't know. I've also done a different color. Yeah. But having some extra ends to weave in because I just do, I just do the top and not the bottom. So, yeah. uh, but I like the look. Yeah. I like the look too. I'm not a big fan of the end. <laughs> just, yeah, I, it doesn't bother me. I, you know, I if don't. I weave in two ends, the weaving in six doesn't bother me. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I usually end up weaving them in too, but sometimes, you know, like for this one, what I'll probably end up doing is I'll put that red up at the cuff, you know, and I'll just carry that cable up through the cuff and do the rest of it ribbing. Oh, that that's a good idea too. Yeah, yeah. So okay, just, so you'll have the so you'll have the cable and then the ribbing detail on the back and then the ribbing. Oh, that's that's cute. I like that idea. Yeah, I'll just carry that up. Socks are great. Yeah. Socks you could do, especially if you're, yeah. you know, if you're an experienced sock knitter, even if you're not an experienced sock knitter, you can kind of just, you can kind of play around because, the, you know, there's not, there's only what, six, 50 to 60, 72 in stitches, you know. Right. Well, and the beauty, the beauty of uh, socks, they're portable, they're easy to take, you know, especially a vanilla sock. Like I wouldn't try to work on that in the car driving. I just wouldn't because yeah, yeah. I would need the pattern there. But vanilla socks are easy. And the thing is, like like before, if if you start knitting it, it's too big, you can decrease a couple stitches. If it's too tight, you can increase. So, you know, no one really is going to be that close to your foot, you know. Yeah, so I, yeah. You know, you can always make some adjustments. I mean, even, even, you know, if you have a heavier calf or a wider ankle, you can always add those stitches right after and just increase. It's It's fine. It's a sock. Yeah, so many people put emphasis on that little hole on the side of the, the heel. Yeah. Like, that's never bothered me. It just yeah. never has. I, like, you look at, um, you know, conventional uh, store-bought socks, and they have that. So yeah. it's just part of a sock. I, I, to me, it makes it, I don't know, I kind of like it. I don't know, but teach is it, does, it You know, what you have, if you put in a, a contrasting heel, you have yarn to stitch in. Yes. So I usually, if it bothers me or if it's a little larger than normal, yeah. then I just stitch around it and, you know, and it's fine. I you always know. find one side is larger than the other, like not I know. Foot, but on the ankle. And, and I never have figured that one out. I'm like, wait, why is the right one always, the hole is always larger than the left one? Yeah, I never, I haven't figured that one out. If anybody knows, you know, let, let me know for sure. <laughs> I know it seems that way too. It does with mine too. That one will be a little bit, and I think I'm, t I'm tugging, you know, that first row to, you know, to decrease, to tug it, you know, but sometimes it's still there. And, you know, it's just like, I followed a great tutorial on under the arm, you know, because I have seen people like with holes. Yeah. And this is pretty really good. good. I mean, there's holes because that's part of the increasing there, yeah. right? Yeah. But I have seen people with really big holes, like you would get in your socks. But I followed this tutorial. It was excellent. Oh, really? Yeah. What tutorial is it? I don't know. I'll have to look it up. Yes, I'm going to make a note to remind you. Well, I'll look it. I'll try to. I'll try to look it up while we're together here, so I can tell you because I did want to write it down. Um, yeah, that's great. I want to, I need to look at that one. Yeah. I need to look at that. Yeah, because I wanted, wanted to talk about my tea. You look it up and I'll talk about my tea. All right. <laughs> so, uh, I am absolutely in love with ginger and turmeric tea. Ginger a, and turmeric? Yes. It's, it's excellent for anti-inflammatory. So, um, I indulge a lot in my turmeric and ginger. And they do sell it. I do buy it on occasion, the reishi tea, but you can make your own. Oh, really? All you have to do is steep fresh ginger 
yeah. Add as much as you want, the spicier, the more ginger. I don't like it that spicy. And I usually put uh, in a quart size, I usually put about a half a teaspoon of turmeric, just dried turmeric in. Really? Yeah, and it's really good. Um, I don't sweeten it. It has a natural sweetness to it. Um, yeah, really good. So you don't have to buy the Rishi expensive tea. It's actually not that expensive. Um, well, yeah. I I like fresh ginger. I mean, I've I've um, used fresh ginger, but I've never thought to make my own tea from it. Oh my goodness, you just steep it. Uh, I usually will take about maybe an inch worth. I peel it. Um, and then I'll just chop it. I don't chop it really tiny. I just chop it in yeah. pieces. And I just let it steep, I don't know, maybe for eight to 10 minutes on a really low heat, literally just okay. a really low simmer. And then I just let it sit for about a half an hour and then I put it in the refrigerator. Oh, so yeah. it's iced. So it's, it's iced. iced. It's, it's but you iced. could warm it up if you want. I mean, you could warm it up. Well, why? I mean, I'm sure because you know, I know ginger is, is good. I know that turmeric is anti-inflammatory and gin, ginger is anti-inflammatory too. Isn't that why they put the two together? Yes. Why well, not? Very Even, good for digestion as well. Well, I, 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 I think I'll buy some fresh ginger because I've enjoyed using it. I've, I've uh, you know, cooked with it. I've made some things with it, but I have some really good peach tea and why not, you know, grate some ginger, even have just like ginger water especially if you're going to make iced tea if you could steep the ginger right and just mm -hmm. add that to the hot tea when it's steeping you know that's, to that's make exactly it, um, what you do i have a nice glass quart jar i'll, I'll yeah. make that much ginger uh what i call ginger tea you're really just steeping ginger i leave it in the fridge right. and yes if i want a cup of turmeric tea i heat that up and add the turmeric to it if i want to add a little bit of honey if it's allergy season for me i'll add a little honey um yeah you can steep it with a regular tea bag you can do anything with it yep yeah that would, that would be really good and all right so i found it what i do okay what i do with the real quick what i do with the ginger because sometimes if you buy a large piece whatever you don't use you could freeze oh really uh-huh yep you mean once it's peeled and it's grated or once it's Either or, whatever you want. I okay. like to peel it ahead of time, and I put it in chunks to size that I would make maybe a cup or a quart, and I yeah. freeze it, and that way I just take a piece out and I steep it. Yeah. Oh, that's a great idea. Because otherwise, I mean, I know it. If it's fresh from the grocery, if it is fresh from the grocery, it will stay a long time, like in the crisper. But then after a while, a long while, it starts to get a little soft and you know green. hard to grate. It's <laughs> so. a little green. Okay, good. So you got the tutorial on how to close the hole under the arm. Okay. Well, so this tutorial um, really helps you understand, you know, how the yarn is working under the arm so that when you are picking up those stitches to, you know, knit the sleeve, then you don't get the holes. Okay. And it was, it's called Picking Up Underarm Stitches for a Gap-Free Sweater Sleeve, but it's by Chili Dog. The Chili Dog. D O D H I L L Y dog. Oh, chili. Grrr, chili dog. Oh, okay. Yeah, not chili, like hot, spicy chili. So picking up underarm stitches for a gap free sweater sleeve. Oh, excellent. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I love a good tutorial. So, um, this one is really good. I'll send you the link. Okay, great. And then you'll have it. I'll send it in your email. Okay. And the other thing that I um, that I used um, for this sweater when I, you know, in in a lot of sweaters, of course, you have to increase stitches for the underarm, and you have to cast on stitches, and then those stitches you pick up later, right? I did watch a very good tutorial and it was by, I was by Roxanne, Roxanne, I don't know if her name is Richardson, but her name, the YouTube is Roxanne Rocks, Roxanne R-O-X, Rocks. Okay. And I'll see if I can find that one too. Um, because what she said is, and this is the problem, and this is why I don't like to use this as a cast on, that backwards loop cast on. Or the E cast on, yeah. 
whatever it is. I never use it. I know a lot of people do use it and that's fine. It's not my preferred message method because I always end up with so much extra yarn at the end. Like there's a big gap between the two stitches. Yeah. And so her tip was, first of all, knit close to the edge of the, of the um, tips of the needle so you don't stretch that yarn out. But like this particular pattern, I think it said cast on eight. It doesn't matter. So she says like for every five or to seven stitches, you cast on one less stitch. And then you will make a stitch when you go to knit that round. And it worked out really great. I didn't have the gap, but I'll find it. So and that's I'll, I'll where, with the, e, with the E cast on or the backwards loop cast on. Um, so what you're doing is you're casting on less stitches and then you're going to make, make one. M1, right. ML, or M right R, whichever one you want to do. In right. between the stitches where there's slack. Uh, yes. Oh yeah, that's a great, yeah, that's a great tip. Yeah. It's great because it takes out that slack that yeah. I, that yeah. I never really, this one know, has a I, lot of, uh, not a lot, I wouldn't say a lot, but the, yeah, this, uh, this has, uh, I think it's uh, a couple of uh, E cast on here, uh, backwards loop cast on for that. Yeah. So I'll try to find, oh, no, let me go back. I'll yeah, find Roxanne it. Roxanne Rocks, right? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, Roxanne. Her name is Roxanne Richardson. She's a master knitter. She's, she's really, you know, if, if, I mean, I know there's a lot of great tutorials out there. I know a lot of people like Very Pink and a lot of people like, you know, a lot of different people yep. that have, tar you know, uh, tutorials. She does a lot of tutorials and okay. she, she's, she's very clear. And she is a master knitter, so I do like I do like looking at her tutorials because um, they're helpful. You know, I don't know, I don't profess to know everything. I might have to find it for you later. Okay, yeah, and I'm sure you can go on uh, on her YouTube. Um, yeah, yeah, too. You would think it would pop. You know, it would be like I could see it right away because you know, like I used it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, unless you put it in your favorites. You know? You no, know, and I did, I probably, I don't usually do that. Yeah, I do. Oh, yeah, I here will. it is. Yeah, I will. I'll put it in my favorites. So what I'll do is I'll send you the link. Okay, great. And your Gmail, and then, um, you know, you'll have it. Okay. It'll be easier. Yeah. Okay. To, and then I can put it in the drop-down menu for anyone who yeah. wants to check it out. Um, yeah, because I really, I really do think it helped a lot. I mean, I, I really was really pleased with the lack of holes under my arms and the slack not in my stitches. It was, to me, it was like, yeah, that makes sense. Why, you know, why deal with the, all this extra yarn at the end if I can leave a stitch and make a stitch because making a stitch picks it all up. So anyway. Exactly. It's like the tip I shared a while back because, you know, I went a whole year without podcasting, right? So uh, about the long, measuring long tail. I got so many messages on that one um, on how to measure to, for a long tail cast on. And, and uh, I don't know, somebody taught me how to do that early on too. Uh, and I, I already know, worst of weight, boom, one arm length is 30 stitches. Like I, I, it's yeah. pretty automatic for me. Um, yeah, DK weight, uh, 40 stitches. So yeah, it's, uh, it's a good tip. So I love learning new tips. So that's a good one. That's a really good one. It is. It is. So anyways, maybe someone else will find it helpful, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. And she, like I said, she has a lot of, a lot of great tutorials out there. She does. She really does. And, um, that Susan Byron too. She has a lot of great tutorials and they're both master knitters. So it's like mm -hmm. these women have done a lot of, put a lot of time and effort into mastering the craft of knitting. And, so and it's like, like you can share it stuff. for free. I mean, come on. That's, uh, that's what I love. I mean, with the world of information available at our fingertips, it, sometimes it's so overwhelming because there's so much out there. So I loved hearing. That's why I watch podcasts, right? Isn't that why we all watch podcasts? You know, number one to learn about patterns and yarns and tips and tricks and 
tutorials, right? There's just so many out there. And that's why I love uh, YouTube. It, even with lately, it's been like, oh my God, what are you watching? What, I'm out of television shows. I need more, you know, so my brother texted me a television show. I think Tom Hanks has a new one coming out in a couple of days. And then I told him, well, you have to go check out the ultimate Beastmaster on Netflix. <laughs> I think it's from 2016, but I thoroughly enjoyed watching it. It's like Ninja, I don't know, the Ninja show, you know, where these athletes are going on a course and it was just so much fun. So, yeah, so without sharing the information, you know, we get overwhelmed with how much is out there. So, so I got to check them both out, Roxanne Rocks um, and Chili Dog. Yeah, that was a, that to me was a really great tutorial i will have to go back and put them in my favorites because i'm sure in knitting more tops or sweaters that that would come in handy for picking up the stitches because i'm sure i won't remember because yeah. you know yeah. always if i only had a break your, always save them in your favorites and you could also uh, put together a playlist as well you yeah sweater knitting or tutorials you know, or yeah tutorials. exactly yeah yeah so yeah, which is a great thing. playlists too so yeah i'll have to do that but yeah, so anyways, I went on too much, but I just want, it just came to me and I thought I better share this because I just, it just was so helpful. Yeah, that's great. I think that's so good. Yeah. You know, and when you talked about holes in socks, it brought to mind holes in sweaters because that happens under the arms too. Yeah, absolutely. It absolutely does. Yeah. So, so what are you working on? Did you cast anything on? Well, I have one new project and I'm, I put this on in the middle or in the interim because I'm trying to decide what my next thing's going to be. So I talked about doing that love story, which is a tank. That's I really great. like this, this top. And um, so I'm still trying to, you know, use up yarn. I know, <laughs> I know. I've been so, very good with my using up my stash. Um, this is just a plain acrylic yarn it's going to be a throw and this yarn has been in my stash for a long time it's just oh. spun. i had I, I used to have a bunch of that well i thought i had maybe five skeins but i had seven oh, i don't wow. know what i <laughs> it's a great blanket amount though it's perfect it's yeah. a perfect blanket amount yeah so um and it's super anyway, soft. I, I did some searching because I did, I thought, well, I could just do a plain, uh, you know, granny square because that's always, or granny stripe because I have already done those and they're very easy to do. And I typically wouldn't knit many throws or blankets that because, means. you know, it just, it really does take a long time. It does. So. And I just want to use these seven things. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, you're crochet, I found, right? So. I, I found a, a crochet pattern. Oh, nice. So can you see the top? Okay. Yes. So, Almost like a zigzag or a scallop. Yeah. It is. It's like what I would have called a ripple. It's what some people yes. would call a chevron. Yes. But it just basically goes up and down. And it's just a matter of adding, you know, a couple chains in the up part and a couple. And this, I believe, is a free pattern. It was on the Lion Brand website. Oh, so, yeah. okay. You know, um, I don't have the pattern name with me. Darn it. Um, you know, she does this test all the time, doesn't she? Sharon. Okay, just share it with me when you find it, and I'll put it in the link. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I try to put everything together, but I don't. I don't have. I don't have it in my basket. That's because okay. I don't really need the pattern anymore because I can just memorize do it. So I figured I um, I knew I had seven skeins, and the pattern I think called for. I don't. I'm not sure. I think five, maybe four or five. So I knew I could make it a little bit wider. So I added like 24 stitches. It counted. It, I think oh. it started with a chain of 102 or something like. It okay. was a multiple of 10 plus two. So I think I did 120 plus two. Okay. And uh, did the chain, and then did followed the pattern. So I knew I could get a little wider, and I thought, well, it might be too wide. Looking at it, will it be long enough? You know, because you want it to 
be a certain length at least. Yes. You know? And uh, so I measured it. And when I finished the first stain, I had 10 inches. So I figured if I had seven, seven stains, I should end up with a blanket that's about 70 inches long, which is a good size. That's a very good size. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's almost six feet. So it's long enough to really just pull over you if you're laying on the and couch. To absorb sitting. you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And sitting on the couch because it's, it's actually quite wide. So, so a guy could use that easily and feel yeah. comfortable. Yeah. I mean, very I mean, it goes from there to here. It's, it's wide. <laughs> you know? I'm trying to look up the pattern. I'm not, uh, I'm not finding it. So just email it to me. I will. I will. You know, so that, that's, that's gonna, you know, like if I was participating in, uh, you know, the stash, stash busting, there's some stash busting things going on, Yeah. you know, a that lot, would add a lot of yards. A lot in 2020, right? Yeah. But I'm really, you know what? This, this, uh, homespun yarn and people have varying, you know, <laughs> feelings on it. But it is really soft. Oh, now, I have years, it's really soft. Years ago, I knit a sweater out of this. I don't have it anymore. You know, it was big and it was bulky, but it was fine for when it was cold. And as after you wash it, it really gets even softer because it's soft yarn. You know? I, uh, I made my mother-in-law a jacket out of the homespun. It was a really light pinkish with, you know, uh, and she loves it. She, uh, yeah. after I finished it, I was like, Ooh, I could really, I would really wear this, <laughs> you know? Uh, but, but I had originally started it for her and I did end up gifting it to her. because <laughs> It was really nice and it was thick and it was soft and yes, yeah, she loves and it. And cozy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, what you need on a damp, cold winter's day, you know? So yeah, it was, uh, it was I, like fitted jacket I mean it was a nice nice garment yeah 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 and I think I'm using I'm using a really big hook L oh yeah that's nice yeah so that's a quick talk about a stash buster that's great yeah so I've I've only been working on that three days that's how far I've gotten I've used three skeins of yarn oh that's so, good okay yeah. so you're almost halfway almost halfway that's I figure, you know, I, I really am concentrating. That's like my thing to do. If I'm going to pick up anything, I'm going to pick, I will pick that up just because I want to get it done now. You yeah. Know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I could appreciate that. Yes. And then I'll move on to the next knitting project. So do you have any other projects? No, that's it. That's yeah. really, that's really it. I mean, other than the sewing. Yeah. And, you know, there's a sewing project I'm not going to show you. And then, you know, there's this sewing project that I already showed you. I love that. I, love. Bag. <laughs> I absolutely love that. Oh, my God. It's, oh, my God. I cannot wait. That is adorable. So, yeah. I love, well, you know, I love flamingos. And, and come on, that know. check pattern on the inside. Oh, my yeah. God. It's like a perfect match. And it holds, it holds a lot of, you know, all my drops yarns are in there and uh, yeah. for my next project. And so tell and, uh, everybody why you showed that was a recent project you just finished, right? Yes. So yes. yeah, that's for me. Yeah. <laughs> she yeah I put some, even though I have, still haven't sent out your, um, your, uh, I know I keep no, waiting every day. I figure one of these days, Pete's going to come in. I'm the worst friend. I really am. <laughs> you know, I actually thought if I had thought about this sooner, I could have put a magnetic snap up here, no. you know, don't to hold it closed. Don't want but, to, don't, I do not want that closed because I want that. Uh, is it a gingham? I want that pattern inside the show. Oh my God, that whole bag, the flamingos, the colors, the whole thing. Yeah, it matches really nice. I'm in love with that. Yes. Yeah. I don't it's want really, a snap. I'm glad it doesn't have a snap. <laughs> I, I really, I like it myself. I mean, I just, you know, I, and that's why I make two because if I only make one of something I really like, it never goes anywhere. Well, you can give that away. Like seriously, how could you, yeah, there's no way I'd be able to let that go. There's no, yeah. no, you would. Yeah. And so I actually, you know, there is a little bit of batting in there. So I just did some quick zigzag or, you know, straight diagonal stitching to hold the layers together. This was actually a tutorial I found on YouTube. 
Oh, really? Wow. Yes. Okay. And the girl is, I think she lives out in Colorado. Her name is Erica. A, I think it's A R N D T. And she has some of the most beautiful quilt patterns I've seen. Oh, and, wow. You know, I have not really wanted to quilt, but just seeing, she has tutorials on how to sew project bags, how okay. to sew. And that's so the many different her, things. A R N D T. That's D -T. the name. Of her. I believe that's how you. Yeah. Oh, Erica. Erica Arndt. Okay. Yeah. So that was a tutorial that I followed. I should post a picture on Instagram. I'm not really good at doing that and tag oh, her. Really because should. Is that is that her fabric scrap organizing bin? Yes. Oh wow! So cute. Yes. My proportions might be a little bit different than hers because I was working with what I was working with, oh, you know. Yeah, yeah well, but again, I think that's, that's the joy of it. You can really, yeah. it doesn't have to be to her specific specifications, right? That's the beauty of it, you know, and, and I think it is so sweet and so kind for any person to put a tutorial out there and give you measurements. She yeah. offers a pattern. Oh, you can. You can purchase the. She is just a sweet girl too. I just love, I just love watching her. You know, she just she spins, she knits, she oh, sews, really? she quilts. Oh, wow. oh yeah. Okay. Oh wow. All right. She's very, very. She's very good. Um. You know. Yeah. So. Okay. And she has some re really beautiful quilt patterns. Aren't homeschool. She homeschools her kids. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I love that. All right. I just subscribed. Yeah. Yep. I subscribed. I actually unsubscribed and then subscribed again. That's all right. That happened. It didn't go fast enough. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Okay. I love that. So that's, yeah. what's, oh, been love <laughs> that's what's been keeping me busy, except for another project, but I can't show you. Okay, all right. That's just going to be a total, total surprise. Oh, I can't wait. I have to get your package put together because, you know, I did well, I think some yarn. If, I, if yeah. I could just finish up two little details that I have to add, I could get this in the mail tomorrow. You would have it by the beginning of next week. Well, everything I have together for you, except for, you know, I have a check to send you, which, you know, I have to figure out what it's for first. And then I keep saying I'm going to do it, and I never do, but it's That's okay. Yeah, yeah. Days go by. So anything else? Are you working on anything else? No. <laughs> Remember my 20 goals for 2020? Yeah. So I thought I would get an update. I thought I would go and, you know, just give my, put myself on a checklist, right? So I wanted to just see how I was doing. So I'm just going to cover a few of them because whatever I don't mention, I haven't tackled yet. And, and nor can I, you know, uh, what go on a knitting retreat i can't do that you know go to a fiber fest i can't do that so i'm going to skip those but number one make 52 things i can knit crochet sew felt anything and i've made 17 out of 52. that's not too bad that's i'm not good. I'm not quite six months into the year right so here's my uh, yeah we're in we're seven months into the year now we are <laughs> July. Oh crap. <laughs> what was I thinking? I was thinking August. You gotta step it up. You're not gonna make it. <laughs> you should be halfway through that. <laughs> no, 17. You oh. need to have 26 done. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay. You know, well, you know, we talked about donations and that's, that's, is that my, yeah, that's my, actually not my number two. So I am, I thought I was doing okay. Thanks, Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, you're doing okay. You don't have I used to, to, yeah. I used to say, I used to, all the time I used to say, uh, you used to keep me in check, right? You and Sherlyn always kept me in check. So it's, it's, you're keeping me in check. So I don't know what I was thinking. Oh my gosh. I don't know what I was thinking. So number two, donate 52 items. So I've donated nine out of 52. I have some already made. I just haven't donated them yet. 
And you and I talked about that. We talked about maybe getting together and doing some kind of a donation. Um, and you said you donated here last year, operationgratitude.com. So I think that's a good idea. So I think um, if you want to, anyone else wants to join us, um, I think that's a good idea. I think uh, for the rest of the year, or at least through what, October, um, yeah. uh, or sooner, who knows, that I'll make a bunch of donations for operationgratitude.com. And that's actually for uh, the military, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so uh, if anybody wants to check that out, operationgratitude.com, um, uh, I'm not, th that's just where my 52 donations are gonna go. I think you said you made hats last year. I did. And they do, they have parameters, uh, they have color parameters, size parameters, um, nothing over a worsted weight because it has to fit in a package. So what they do is they, they put together packages for the military um, and each person will get a little uh, a box. So, um, so yeah, I, I like that. I really, I, you, know, you know me and the military, I've uh, done a lot of donations for them. Um, especially the military in, uh, or the veterans in need. And this will be to active duty. So I think this is exciting. So uh, yeah, so that's, that's really good. I think it's nice to, um, I mean, you know, things that people make take time and effort. And I think it's a little way to show appreciation for these people who are so far from home, mm -hmm. you know, keeping us safe and keeping us free. And um, to let them know that there are people who are thinking about them that yeah. we do care back home, that we haven't forgotten, that there's some people still out on the field yeah. every day. Yes, and with everything going on in our country, I kind of seem to feel like maybe uh, they're being extremely neglected at this time too, um, you know, because efforts aren't being put forth for them. So I think this is wonderful, I really yeah. do. Um, and so, so hats and scarves uh, and specific colors. So go on the website, if you will, operationgratitude.com. Um, go under the, the volunteer. They, you said what they'll do, you have to pay for shipping, but what they'll do is they'll, they'll give you a link to print out the shipping label, but you, ha you just have to pay for the shipping, but uh, it'll all be printed out, which I think is, you know, saves you some time as well. And uh, yeah, I think it attaches. It's somehow how they attach who it's coming from and what's expected. Because I think you you have to fill out, you know, sort of what you're going to be sending. So that they're looking for it, so they get it. And then when they receive it, they know they've gotten it from you. And I think it's it's a nice way that they're trying to keep track of people who are, you know, donating too. I think it's, you know, I enjoyed giving what I had because I had made quite a few hats last year. And I thought, where am I going to, I don't want to keep them anymore. I need to give them somewhere. And, uh, you know, I had looked up some other places to maybe donate to. Um, and then I just, you know, came across this. And so my, I think my sister mentioned this or sent me a link. And I looked into it and I thought, well, yeah, that's a, a worthy cause. I, In my eyes, it's a worthy cause to send to. So um, that's what I did. Yeah, I, I love it. I absolutely love it. Uh, yeah. Again, I've... I, uh, I have 43 items to donate uh, and yeah. make the majority of those to go to uh, Operation Operation Gratitude. Yeah, I love that. I really do. And, you know, I could, I could knock out scarves on my machine and then hand made a bunch of hats. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's, so that's my plan. I, lo I like that. Yeah. All right. So that's, that's our goal. So if you want to join us, please, please do that. And maybe I'll even... Um, I'll even put together a giveaway uh, in the future for that. See how much, how many items people could could uh, could put together for uh, for uh, Operation Gratitude. Yeah, yeah, mm, that's a good idea. Yeah, we'll have to think about it. Yeah, if they're willing to donate and put their time into it, I'm willing to donate uh, some yarn to somebody. Okay, That'd be great. Okay. Uh, so uh, back to my 20 goals for 2020. So that was yeah. number two. Uh, number four, learn to needle felt. <gasps> you did that. <laughs> so excited. So that's yeah. check, check, right? Oh my God, I'm so excited. Number, number 12, because take a sewing class, join a knit group. I can't do any of those. 
Um, I have not written up any knitting patterns. That's definitely something on there. Finish your frog all whips. I haven't done that. So I, I skipped from number four to number 12 because five through 11 have not been done. <laughs> so organize six rooms by summer. I did a closet. So I can count. Is that considered a room? A small room, a very small room. <laughs> Yeah, so I did a closet. So it's still summer. I have five to go. Maybe I could do, I don't think I have five more closets in the house, but <laughs> who knows? Maybe I could. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on that. Um, so, okay, so, oh, number 13, run a 5K. I've done that. Oh, good. Not an official one. Oh. But I have done a, done a 5K. So I actually, believe it or not, the other day, and I didn't run it. I walked it. I did a 10K. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so that's done. So uh, start and finish punching the work. I haven't done that yet. Uh, 15, write up and share three recipes. I've done one. I did one. So, and then I just did another one, but I didn't write it up. My uh, ginger turmeric tea. Organized pattern and pattern book. Done. Oh. Going to pat that's myself on the back for that one. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. Yeah. And then let's see, I completed I 18 and number 20 are ongoing. Do 20 acts of kindness. Um, there was a woman, uh, we have a, a, a woman that works at our local grocery store. She is, um, she's a, a, a wonderful young woman who she has been spraying all the carts. She has to go out into the parking lot and she has to bring all the carts back and she has to wipe them all down. Every time I go now, she's there and she's doing it. And it's 90 wow. degrees here. It's 90 degrees. She's drenched. I saw one of the workers bringing her a cold drink the other day. And I said, you know what? This is ridiculous. So I just went out. I got some carts and I brought them in for her. So um, it's not a big deal, but it was just something I could do. Uh, she, the look on her face was like, well, what, like, why? And I was like, oh, I just brought them in. You know, I was on my way back in. I wanted to return my card. So why not bring a couple extra? She goes, uh, oh, oh, okay. So she was a little dumbfounded at first, but then afterwards, I think she was like, oh, thank you. As I was walking out the door. So, uh, yeah. So I try to continue to do, uh, acts of kindness is simple little things, you know, letting someone take my parking spot. Uh, things like that. So uh, I still continue to send texts out to my family members. Uh, it's not just on Sundays. I was doing it just on Sunday. Now I do it all the time. And number 19, lose eight to 10 pounds. Zero. Zero. So I got to work on that one. So I have some to work on. So I still have some to work on, but I did accomplish some things. So I am excited well, about that. If you would have written gain eight to 10 pounds, you could have accomplished that. <laughs> I could have easily done that. And you know, going back to it, I'm like, wait, was that eight to 10 pounds before COVID-19? Cause I can't really remember. <laughs> there is something to be said for being in the house and, you know, probably doing more baking, you know, and not being out and just, I mean, not, I mean, you can go out and walk, I, I get that, or ride your bike. But I mean, you know, just being out to go shopping, just walking around leisurely, just because you want to get out, you know what I mean? Because a yeah. lot of the time when I would just get out to shop would be to look around, maybe, you know, you go to the dollar store, you go to Joanne's or Michael's, and you just want to see what's out there, what people are doing, you know, chit chat yeah. with someone, you know, but you're not doing all of that anymore. You know, we're just not venturing out as often as you know and so those little extra calories aren't being burnt <laughs> well not only that but it it forces you to be in the same room as those items right so where you're out for two or three hours and not thinking about the cookie in the cookie jar right all of a sudden you're in the living room and the cookie jar is 10 feet away so it's like you know Karen I'm still here and then it's like, I don't stop hearing that until they're all gone. And then there's nobody talking to me in my ear, right? Because I ate all the cookies. <laughs> yes. yes. Oh. I totally, totally hear you. And I understand. Yes, I understand. 
Yep. Well, I've been I trying know. not to bake, but I made Rice Krispie treats yesterday. I made Rice Krispie treats you, over the <laughs> You did? <laughs> I bet yours were so much better than mine. No, I don't think so. But mine he had red and uh, blue kernels of Rice Krispies in them because I bought the Patreon. <laughs> oh, that would have been great. No, I see being a dietitian, right? The dietitian in me, I have the good dietitian and I have the bad Karen, right? So it's like the good dietitian, wow, no, the bad Karen, well, you need to make something sweet, right? Got to have something sweet in the house. So <gasps> Rice Krispie Treats. So the dietitian side said, well, you should use brown rice, right? Brown puffed rice. And I had to buy gluten-free marshmallows, right? So I made them and I'm like, well, is there any way to spike up the flavor? I'll have a little cinnamon. That should be good, right? A little cinnamon. So uh, I was so excited about it. And then I was, as I was mixing it all together, I'm like, yeah, using the brown rice puffs, not a good idea. No? No, it absorbs. Oh. <laughs> so they're not crunchy. They're soggy. Oh, I didn't, I didn't, I wouldn't have known that. Well, not soggy. They're chewy. Yeah. They're chewy. So I, I didn't mind the cinnamon. I put yeah. a little bit of nutmeg in there. Um, yeah, so they weren't the best. Well, I think even adding, I never even thought to add like cinnamon or anything like that in a Rice Krispie treat. That, I think that would be good. Now, I know I offer, <laughs> I offered one to my daughter-in-law and she, and <laughs> I guess, you know, she's vegan, which is fine. And I didn't realize they're not, I knew they wouldn't have gluten in because she doesn't eat gluten because there's the rice, the Rice Krispies. She says, oh, they're not vegan. I said, they're not vegan. And she's like, no, marshmallows. And I thought, yeah. oh, I never thought about it. So there's a lot of things that I do not know yet. <laughs> well, you could buy, uh, you could buy these uh, marshmallows that I buy are vegan. Because I, I text, I sent a text to my niece. Because a lot of the sweets, for some reason, a lot of the vegan sweets are gluten-free. So I said, our text, I'm like, you know, what vegan marshmallows do you use? And sure enough, they were gluten-free and they're called dandies. Um, so you, they're okay. Like, I'm not a big marshmallow fan. I love- no, I'm not either. I love Rice Krispie treats. Yeah. Also, Rice Krispies are not technically gluten-free. Oh. So, uh, but the Harris Teeter brand, or I think the Kroger brand as well, are gluten-free. Uh, okay. Yeah, Good so- Yeah, so Rice Krispie treats, they don't mark them as gluten free. Yeah. So technically, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. So so they're not calling my name. I have a whole plate of them in the kitchen, and they're not calling my name, which is fine with me because I don't need to eat them all. So hopefully, Dave will come home hungry and eat them. Yeah, because they're chewy. Yeah. Not. No. Yeah. But that's okay. We live and we yeah. learn. Bad oh, well. dietitian. Bad dietitian. Listen to the bad Karen. <laughs> real butter and real, real Rice Krispies. <laughs> yeah, see, it does make a difference. I mean, you know, I always think that there, there could be worse things you could be eating. At least there's a lot of cereal, you know. <laughs> well, I thought, you know, if I use the whole brown rice puff, you know, the puff rice, maybe I have a little bit of fiber in it, a little more yeah. nutrients. Uh, you know, sometimes it doesn't work out. Sometimes healthy recipes just don't work out. And no, that, well, you know, if you want more fiber, you need to just get some wood chips, add them in there. <laughs> I was thinking of flax. I was thinking of ground flax. I thought that would add a nutty flavor, you know? Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bad dietitian. Yeah. Oh my God. Too funny. Well, I just to know that I'm a dietitian. I am a dietitian. A registered the dietitian. thing is, is I think that no matter what, no matter what, we all like a little sweet. We all like a little treat, you know? I mean, you know, if we didn't, we wouldn't have so much yarn. We wouldn't. <laughs> so, you know, and I don't think there's, I honestly don't think there's anything wrong with having a treat. It's how much of a treat you have, you know? And it's the same with everything, though, Karen. I mean, whether it's good food or bad food, too much of anything with the neglect of one thing is not good. 
everything in moderation. Everything must be in moderation. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I always tell people, you know, if you could eat 80% of your diet healthy, make 20% unhealthy, you, you'll be fine. You'll be just fine. Yeah. 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 That's the route I'm going to take. So I don't have anything else to share. <laughs> I don't either. Uh, that's it for me. Um, I haven't downloaded any new patterns except for, you know, the home body that I started that I did a cast on to. Uh, but next time, because I'm going to plan on going through some of my, my patterns that are in my library to see if I can work on one of those. So, yeah. But that's yeah. it for me too. So, yeah. Me too. Yeah, so, so let's today. call it a day. Yeah, we'll call it a day. Everybody, thank you so much for joining us. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Uh, if we mentioned anything in this episode that you are interested in, uh, it'll be down in the, 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 the menu down there. Um, subscribe if you don't subscribe. Hit the bell if you want notifications when we upload an episode. Um, and I guess that's it for us today, right? Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you. Until next uh, time. Yeah, until next time, we'll see you again. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I do this every time. <laughs>